that's going to be something to pay attention to. Keep your eyes on it because it will get messy. It's messy right now, but it's going to get messier. Check this out, though. Somebody stated, quote unquote, the reaction from the public is the reason why Pat Fitzgerald got fired. What it do, what it do. I don't know. I said that that was corny and cringy. We'll, we'll just leave it in there anyways. Hope all you had a great Tuesday. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. <laughs> Why did I start out this video by saying what it do, what it do? I have no idea, but let's lock in. Let's get down to business. This is pretty much going to be part two. Yesterday, if you didn't see the video, go check it out. We talked about the scandal. That's what I'm going to label it. The scandal going on at Northwestern. I'm sure some of you know what's going on. If you don't, go watch this video for context. I'm not giving you a rundown. To make an extra extremely long story short, Northwestern is currently having some serious and big time hazing and racism allegations come out. These are coming out from former players and not just like from the past year or two, but dating back 10, 15, 20 years ago. Like I said, you want some more information on these hazing allegations and what actually happened. We talked all about that and went full and deep into detail in yesterday's video. But however, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to pick right up where we left off in yesterday's video. Actually, in that video, I stated and when I uploaded it, it changed that Pat Fitzgerald, he was suspended for two games. And right when I uploaded it, it was announced that he was fired so yeah that's where we're at so that's a big time deal going from a two game suspension to being fired and i'll explain why that's a big deal actually we'll just get into it right now because when you fire a head coach that means you're no longer paying him for example you just suspend him for two games even without pay he's still gonna get five ten million dollars however much his contract is per season and here's the interesting part about this that a lot of people aren't paying attention to but it did pique my interest so as soon as it was announced that pat fitzgerald was fired you know what he did? He went out and hired the best attorney. How good is this attorney, you may ask? Well, according to reports, his attorney charges $2,000 an hour. Yep, that's right, you heard me correctly. Two bands an hour. There's a lot of people out here that make $2,000 a month, and he hired a guy that is charging $2,000 an hour. That's absurd. That's crazy. And I'll just read it off right here. You see it. Why is he doing that? Because he has $42 million left on his contract. So yeah, hiring the best attorney, I'd say it's worth it. For example, let's just say in total that Pat Fitzgerald, he has to pay this attorney even $300,000. It'd be worth it. It really would be worth it. And the reason he hired this great attorney is because Northwestern, and you know they're trying to do this, they're trying to say they fired him for cause. And for those of you who don't know, if you fire somebody for cause, you don't got to pay them. Essentially meaning, if they can prove this is for cause, and I know I'm repeating myself, but stick with me. If they can prove this is for cause, they don't got to pay him a penny out of that $42 million. That's going to be something to pay attention to. Keep your eyes on it because it will get messy. It's messy right now, but it's going to get messier. And I know that's not the biggest deal going on, the money situation, because the most important part about all this is, is these allegations and this scandal that went on and allegedly is currently still going on. Moving along here, though, in the past 24 to 36 hours, I've seen a lot of people, whether that be players former managers, former assistant coaches, people that know Pat Fitzgerald, they're speaking up about this and they're not happy. They're defending him. And also a couple players on Northwestern, they've said, oh, well, if Pat Fitzgerald's gone, then I'm going to be leaving too. The point is a lot of people, they got his back. Now I'm going to make this clear. I have no comment on that and I have no opinion. I have never met Pat Fitzgerald. I don't know anything about him, so no comment. a matter of fact, I do have a comment. Here's the only thing I'm going to say. Good people can also do bad things. It's one of my sayings that I say on this channel. Y'all know every time we talk about a four or five star recruit getting kicked off a team or doing something bad what do i say hey i don't think this guy's a bad person i just think he did a bad thing i firmly believe that that's what i say in this life now don't get me wrong if you're a bad person i have no problem saying that y'all know this i'm gonna speak my mind but for example i've had a couple buddies i went to high school with i think they're great and solid dudes but they've just made a couple of bad decisions and it's ruined their life believe this or not this can be true good people can do bad things I'm gonna leave it at that. Am I accusing Pat Fitzgerald of anything? No, I don't know. I don't know if he did this stuff. I don't know if he allowed it. I have no idea. You can do what you want with all this information. I have no opinion on this subject and manner. I'm just reporting the news. I'm just saying I know people personally that are solid, great dudes that have also done some shady and bad things. As far as it goes for him getting fired yesterday, here's what I will say. He pretty much is Northwestern. When I've thought of Northwestern football the past few years or how long has he been there? Has it been 10 years, 15 years? I think it passed Fitzgerald. That's it. And when you are the head coach of a football team, whether it should be this way or not, 
you do have a lot of responsibility and all of this is going to fall on your shoulders. Whether he did this stuff, whether he was associated, I don't know, but he's going to get blamed for all of it. So as far as it goes for Northwestern firing him, I'm not going to sit up here and act like I don't understand why because I do. The head coach is always going to get a lot of the blame in anything and everything. And maybe he does deserve the blame. I don't know, but what I'm saying is he's going to get it regardless. But where things get a little dicey is, and I'll show you this right here from Aaron Torres, where he quote tweeted this, Northwestern is keeping the rest of their staff. They just fired Pat Fitzgerald. And the reason it's sort of ironic is because as you can see right here, so Pat Fitzgerald is fired because quote unquote, it's the coach's job to know everything that goes on in his program, but all the assistants who worked under him, who are allowed to the same culture get to stay? Yeah, so that's uh, really interesting. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. You fire the head coach because you're like, hey, it's his responsibility. He's got to know what's going on behind the scenes, but you keep everyone on the staff? What? Check this out, though. Somebody stated, quote unquote, the reaction from the public is the reason why Pat Fitzgerald got fired. That's something I want to speak on because in 2023, with social media being as big as it's ever been, we see this a lot now, not just college football, but companies out there, they got to fire people just because people in social media, they're outraged by something somebody did that represents a company and they want to see them gone. So what happens? The company, they're getting all this backlash and the only way to get rid of it is by fire that said person who did something. Like for example, let's say you work at a car manufacturer place like Toyota. Let's say you work for Toyota and on the weekend somebody caught you smoking Mary Jane and it was a bad look or just something terrible doing something bad and I know Mary Jane ain't a big deal so what's the let's just say they caught you doing coke or something and by the way YouTube's guidelines are strict nowadays I'm talking about coca-cola my bad yeah coca-cola let's say somebody saw you doing coca-cola on the weekends and sent it in to Toyota the manufacturing company or not sent it in my bad they posted it on Twitter and then it started going viral on Twitter Instagram TikTok everywhere well what's gonna happen and you probably know where I'm going with this all these people are going to say, oh my gosh, I can't believe Toyota would let somebody that's doing Coca-Cola on the weekends work for them, and they're going to send it into Toyota. They're going to say, oh my gosh, how can you let this person represent the company, and blah, 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 blah. All the Karens and Joe Schmoes and blah, blah, blah. So what's going to happen? Toyota, just because of the backlash they received from social media, they're going to fire that dude. They're not even firing him because they think it's a big time deal, and maybe it's not a big deal to them. They're just firing him because of how bad it looks to the public. That is a great point this person brings up right here, and that also, I feel like, has a part in all of this. Because think about it. At first, Northwestern was like, eh, we'll just give him a two-game suspension. It's not going to blow up. It's not going to be a big time deal. Then boom, what happens? It blows up. It's all over social media. They're getting a ton of backlash. So they're like, yeah, I guess we gotta raise the suspension. We just gotta fire this dude. You can't sit up here and tell me they fired him because they wanted to fire him. They just wanted to give him a two week suspension and they probably didn't even wanna do that. They fired him just because of the perception from the public. Think about it. I don't wanna get too deep into that, but it's kinda crazy when you think about it. Cause think about this, if this would've happened before social media and 30, no wait a minute, social media, Instagram and all that stuff wasn't even really out. I didn't even have Wi-Fi until 2016, so. When was Instagram and Twitter out? Probably like 2010. If all this happened in like 2000 and let's just say 2007, 2008, he probably wouldn't even got suspended for two weeks. But now since social media is everywhere, everybody's on Twitter. Yeah, it blew up. Looks bad for the university. So had to cut them. And like I stated in yesterday's video, it's already a big time deal, but you're out of your mind if you think it's not going to get bigger in this. It's only going to get bigger, bigger, and bigger, and it's only going to get worse, worse, and worse. Because when people come out and have their allegations, other people are going to speak up about their experiences, and you know how that goes. But I ain't going to hold you on. I know this has nothing to do with the hazing allegations or whatnot. I'm curious to see how this $42 million contract is going to be played out. Because you know dang well Northwestern doesn't want to pay him a dime. I don't have a horse in this race or an opinion on any of it. Right is right, wrong is wrong. Let me know your thoughts down below. But uh,